Hi everyone, I am so excited for our video today because the other day I received a PR package and when I opened the box, I was actually very surprised to receive these brushes from Fude Bobo. So thank you, thank you so much Fude Bobo for sending these my way. I truly, truly appreciate it. And um, I also have to say that I actually met Fude Bobo by chance at Fude Matsuri this year and um, I actually didn't know that it was her. And uh, the story is like this. I was just like, you know, walking around the uh, festival grounds and then all of a sudden three wonderful ladies came up to me and wanted to have like you know photos taken and I said like sure no problem now unfortunately there was some language barrier because they were Chinese and unfortunately my Mandarin has largely been forgotten so it was quite unfortunate that we weren't able to converse like you know about our passion so um, after the photos were taken we went our separate ways and then all of a sudden my private messages my dms on instagram started like you know popping and i go like what's going on and all of a sudden when i read one of the messages they go like oh my god we can't believe it that you met fude bobo and then all of a sudden i go like what i just met fude bobo so um yeah so i actually have an idea um who fude bobo is because i would read about her um like you know on certain message boards or like you know Fude Facebook groups and they would always say they're like oh I bought this brush from Fude Bobo I like this brush from Fude Bobo I go like so in my head I go like who is Fude Bobo and I actually got the chance to meet her so I'm very 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 grateful for that and also one other thing I know that I have a follower on Instagram who is actually the bridge between Fude Bobo and I because I believe she's the one who actually is like you know the reason why I receive this PR package from Fude Bobo. So thank you so much to you. I know you know who you are, so I truly appreciate it. And I hope that this video is going to prove helpful and insightful, especially if you're just like, you know, um, looking if you are like, you know, you have the right reasons to purchase these brushes. So I have six brushes with me today. The five of these are actually like, you know, collaborations between Fude Bobo and like, you know, two Fude manufacturers from Kumano and this brush here is actually a brush from the Yoshiki series of Kuyudo and this is the cheek and highlighting brush I believe and the hair used in this is actually silver fox and it's actually very very beautiful. This brush actually came with its own box as you guys can see here very beautiful box and of course the Kumano Fuda seal is here so I believe like if it is a special collection from Kuyudo they would come in their own box so this brush is actually very pretty it looks very elegant and I love the black handle here with the black ferrule and I like the shine that I see here and it goes very well with the silver fox um, bristles that we see here so it just kind of like goes very well together and I love that the uh, brand here Yoshiki or like you know this the the engraving here of Yoshiki is actually in gold so it just adds to a certain elegance of this brush now speaking of the brush head so as you guys can see here look at that incredible snap back into position of the brush head I find that so amazing and also I have like you know Mm, observe with the design of the brush head here wherein at the back of the brush here it kind of like goes straight and then here at the front because this is where I consider the front where the Yushiki stamp is or engraving if you look at it from the side it kind of like you know flares midway and then it tapers into a point you know when you look at it here and to me when I see this it reminds me of the pads of our fingers and I actually love it when a brush is designed like this because it's just like you know it's similar to the movement of how you apply makeup using your fingers so I already love this brush for that now also one other thing the brush head although this is silver fox it's a different type of silver fox that like you know I have observed because the other silver fox that I have like for example I have the entire set now so let me just get the F03 so if you guys can see it here this one is very airy and very soft and the snapback is very smooth it's not abrupt like this Yoshiki brush here so I have to say that this Yoshiki brush here um, it has quite you know it's very resilient it's very strong and it's not as airy as this 
Chikahodo FO3 brush. And also for everything, I have to say that by feel alone, this Yoshiki brush here feels very silky and very smooth, like incredibly silky and incredibly smooth. Because like for example, this FO3 here feels very smooth already, but this one, it's a different grade. I have to say and also um, I can also observe that the bristles on this brush is actually like you know it's it's not as um, textured because this fo3 is quite textured so I don't know if it comes from a different part of the silver fox um, but um, the quality is very different, but this doesn't necessarily mean that the FO3 is a bad brush, but it's just different, if you know what I mean. And of course, the brush heads are very different, wherein the brush head of this Yoshiki brush is actually very compact. Can you see that? So we, like, you know, in just, like, you know, seeing this design alone, it gives me an idea that I can use it for targeted application of certain products on the face, and we will try that a little bit later. Okay, okay, now on to the brushes that Fudibobo has with collaborations from different brush manufacturing companies and I'm going to start by talking about these two. So this is the Bobo and 90 eyeshadow brushes and these brushes are actually made by Kuriedo because this is another Kumano Fude um, brush manufacturer but when I actually got this in the box, the packaging here did not come with a Kumano foodie seal. So even if it is made in Kumano, um, it means that they might not be part of the Kumano Fude committee or cooperative, sorry. So, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the quality of this is bad. So it just means that they're not part of it, okay? All right, so if I'm gonna put the two brushes here on the palm of my hands, you guys can see that the total length of the brush from the tip of the ferrule here to the base of the handle is actually quite short but this doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't fit well into the hands and as you guys can see I'm actually able to maneuver the brush into the position of how I would actually use them and I truly appreciate that. Now as you guys can see both of these brushes come in black even like you know the ferrule is in black the handle is in black but we can actually see that there are some glitters here at the base of the handle close to the label and i really like that because it adds a certain personality to the brushes like you know certain type of playfulness that i actually like okay so this brush here this is called the bobo n90s brush so this is a small brush now this one is called the Bobo and 90M brush, so the medium brush. But um, if we just take a look at this together and take a look at the brush head design, I could say it's a very small brush and I believe that this will actually work for people who have smaller eyelids, like you know you don't have a lot of space because the design of the brush head here can be very helpful in applying eyeshadow products in a very specific area of the eyes. Look at that and even this. Okay, the Bobo and 90s. Although the Bobo and 90s, like you know, it just looks like your regular, you know, pencil eyeshadow brush or even like a definer brush. Because, like for example, when I'm looking at this right now, I could say that it's actually comparable to my Chikahodo Z10 or even one of the, like you know, a detail brush or eyeshadow brush from one of their um, limited edition um, collections before. But the main difference is that I see is in the way they taper, wherein, like, for example, in comparison to this Z10, because this Z10 also has, like, you know, gray scroll here, the Z10 actually, like, you know, tapers into a much more sharper point here, while the Bobo and 90S brush has a much more rounder tip. So in just doing this activity alone side by side, the Bobo and 90S brush will actually deliver a nice diffused um, eyeshadow on the eyes without being too defined because with this, the Z10, because of the tip here, the sharp tip, when you apply the color here, because there's a strength in the middle of this, this will apply a very defined um, eyeshadow application on the eyes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the Bobo and 90S brush will not apply a defined like you know color but we will find out a little bit later in the video okay. Now the Bobo and 90M I don't have any um, like you know squirrel brush that I would compare this to because I don't have much squirrel brushes. The only one that I have is this Z5 from Chikahodo and if we put it beside 
with the Bobo and 90M, we can see that the main difference is that, like, you know, this is just like, you know, way too big in terms of like the brush head. But I have to say in terms of feel, of like, you know, the quality, I do have to say though that the Bobo and 90M is quite silky and it's very soft. But it's not as airy as the Z5 from Chico Hodo. But then again, because to me, this one is almost like a blending brush of sorts because of how big it is. Well, this one, the Bobo and 90M, it's more of like you know, a packing kind of an eyeshadow brush. But I just love how small it is because it can really help you to apply detailing work on the eye, especially when I'm working with someone who has small eyelids. And I do have to say, though, that in just like, you know, playing... With the brush heads here with my fingertips i feel a certain resistance and a resilience in the belly of this and they actually go back into shape quite nicely which is remarkable for me because like you know scrail brushes as we know by now are not the most resilient brushes in the market so i really love that and it just kind of gives me an idea that you can actually use this to a certain degree just like you know to buff out and to blend out colors so again we will try these two out a little bit later okay okay and the piece de resistance of this video is actually these three eyeshadow brushes because this belongs to the Fudebobo and chikohodo collaboration collection and these three actually like you know peaked at my interest mainly because of the hairs used on the bristles here because it's actually a mix of psycho goat hair and weasel and when i read that at the food bobo website i was i said to myself how in the world did they come to think of this because like you know i'm still amazed by it because this is actually the first time that i have heard of a mix such as this because usually it's like you know pony and goat or squirrel and horse or like you know um what else like psychoho and sokoho like you know things like that but i have never heard of weasel and psychoho and i do have to say that weasel is one of the most like you know versatile hairs to use on eyeshadow brushes or brushes in general because you can use them for powder and you can also use them for cream and liquid so in me looking at this right now and just like you know running my hands through it i'm actually quite amazed on the quality and like you know just in theory i'm starting to think now of what i can use these brushes for so uh let's talk about these brushes one by one okay oh but before <laughs> one other thing when i got these three brushes they all came in their packaging and they all had their kumano foodie seals so i'm just like you know reiterating that which is very very important okay. okay so the first brush that we have here is the bobo chikohodo so1 brush and the brush head design here is actually very traditional in a sense that it is like you know flat and round but it's more paddle like to me and um in just like you know twirling the brush around and seeing like you know how the head of the bristles actually form we can actually see on the side here that it's actually very full on the belly and there's actually a certain airiness here at the bristles which i actually like because to me this means that this brush has a certain ability of actually blending out product which i really love because for example um, my other weasel brush here so this is from hakuhodo and this is the s132 brush if we look at it here and we put it on the side and we put it on the top there is no airiness at all here and um that's the reason why when i use this brush it's always very directional you know it's never in a buffing motion like it's always directional because that's how it's designed for even when applying this as like you know for concealer but with the bobo chikohodo s01 brush i believe this can be great to use for like blending out colors or buffing out colors or even applying transition colors on the eyes and also one other thing it also reminds me of like a sonia g worker brush let me just get one maybe let's get the worker pro brush yeah i think they are almost the same but they just differ in the way they taper but as you guys can see the way like you know here on especially here on the side that there's just a fullness in their belly here and there's a certain airiness here at the tips that I'm sure will be great to use when you're like, you know, buffing out color. Now, by the way, when I'm doing that, um, I have to say that there's the brush head here of the Bobo and Chikohodo SO1 brush. There's a, the, the snap back of this is very 
you know, it's very gentle and very soft. It's not as abrupt because the Hakuhodo S132 brush, if I just like, you know, run my fingers it, you guys can see how abrupt the bristles go back into its position. While the Bobo and Chikohodo S01 brush here, it has a very nice, like, you know, dainty way of going back into position. And I just really love it like super just by touch alone i love it i can't wait to try this out a bit later okay next what we have here is the bobo and chikohodo so2 brush and as we guys can see by the brush head design here this will be great for like you know eyeliner application and i'm sure also to a certain degree to buffing out eyeliner pencils and um i do love that like you know the belly here like you know, at the base of the brush it's very full but when it tapers here to the tips it's actually quite you know flat and sharp which i actually like because like for example i have here a brush from uh here from sonia g so this is the smudger 2 brush and as you guys can see they're almost the same like you know in design and length I believe like the Sonia G Smudger 2 brush is just a little bit wider, just a tad wider. And but if we touch the bristles here, the tips, we can see that the Smudger 2 brush from Sonia G, it doesn't really um, like you know retain its shape, but it actually like you know bends. And maybe that's what it's designed for. But the Bobo and Chikohodo SO2 brush here, it really like you know there's a really nice strength to the tip here. And I can say that this brush will actually apply a very nice, like, you know, defined eyeliner look on the eyes. I love that. So I also have, like, another brush from Chikohodo, which is, like, you know, a smudger brush. And this is from the regular line, which is the R-SL4. And if we just compare it to each other, it's very different. Because the R-SL4 here has a much more rounder brush head tip here and uh, and the tips are not as like you know sharp and defined as the bobo chikohodo so2 brush oh i can't wait to try this out later okay and the final brush that we have here is the bobo chikohodo eyeshadow brush so this ha doesn't have a number by the way but this one when i look at the brush head here it looks to be like a very traditional brush head design wherein it's round and flat and very paddle like which is like very similar to the s132 brush from hakuhodo here again this is all this is made of weasel all weasel and let me get the baby sister which is the s139 brush okay so if i just put these brushes side by side we can see that they can actually be cousins wherein the bobo and chikuhodo uh, eyeshadow brush here just has like you know more variety because of the psychohogo tears that's actually added onto it look at that so again this one when i look at this brush the bobo chikohodo eyeshadow brush because it's not as airy as the s01 brush where is that so when i use this it's going to be in a much more directional approach like you know for patting on color or even like just to blend out the edges into like really like you know maybe in a much more defined way or angular way i like that so now that i've just like you know been playing around with the brushes here on my eyes um i believe like the psychoho hairs here adds a certain volume to these brushes and it actually kind of make it a little bit softer if you know what i mean because a pure weasel brush here it's quite like you know very strong and very resilient and can be quite uncomfortable because they're it's really compact and they're like really really strong so um there are some people who actually do not like the pressure that it gets exerted like you know on the eyelid okay so um i have a lot of revelations that's going on right now and i'm actually loving the fact that i am enjoying this new brushes um, with like, you know, a different blend of hairs and it's very rare that something like this actually gets me very very excited oh now by the way before we go on to the next step if we just put these bobo and chikohodo collaboration brushes together and talk about the design on the handles here we can see that it has a very nice like you know shiny ferrule and handle and the names bobo and chikohodo are actually stamped in gold here which is actually very beautiful now the handle design here has a very like you know tapered and almost like you know sharp 
edge, quote unquote, and this actually belongs to the regular series of Chikohodo. So let me put a regular series brush here, right beside the Bobo and Chikohodo collection. So it's a very nice trademark of Chikohodo, by the way. So at least, like you know, Bobo didn't have to spend for like you know research about like you know having new handles made for her. So that kind of is good in my book. And let me put another regular um, brush from Chikohodo right beside it so that you guys can see the uniformity and where the inspiration is actually coming from. Alright, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a very light hint of foundation on my face because I actually want to use the Koyudo Yoshiki highlight and um, cheek brush and I just need to have a very thin layer of foundation on because I want to try and use it with powder and blush and highlighter. Okay, so I just added a very light spritz of Lisa Eldridge's um, mist. So I'm going to pat that in. And I'm just going to add a very thin layer of this Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I'm just going to blend it all over. Okay, and now I'm going to add some concealer. So this is my NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. I don't know if I always get the name right. And I actually want to try and use this brush from Fude Bobo because like you know when you tell me that your brushes have weasel hair in it, it's gonna be a multi-use brush for me. And I have to say that this brush is actually enabling me to blend out the concealer quite nicely. So this is the one that is the one with no label at all, so it's just the eyeshadow brush. And it can actually help me also to create like in a very light definition. And I kind of like the fact of how well it actually blended out the concealer in my under eye area. Oh, fantastic. I love that. Okay, now let me try the other eye now. And I'm going to be using the S01 brush because this one has a like you know very nice buffing ability. So let me see if this will work. Yeah, it still works. It blended out the product very nicely. It creates a much more softer kind of impact of the concealer in the under eye area. It's not as like you know, there's a certain opacity here because of the way that you're just able to blend it and pat it. Well, this brush actually, like, you know, blends it out and buffs it out. Hmm. So if you find, like, you know, if you have a concealer and it's quite thick and you want to thin it out a little bit and not as, like, you know, full coverage as this, this brush is perfect to use for that purpose. Okay, I love it. And then right now, we will set the concealer with powder using the highlight and blush brush from the Yoshiki series from Kuyudo. Okay, so on this eye, I am going to be using some loose setting powder. Okay, let me see. Okay, okay. so as you guys can see here, it actually picks up a ton of products, so we have to be very careful with that. Not unless if it's the kind of look that you are going for. And let us just add that here in the under eye area. Wow, it's actually able to deliver a very nice opaque color and like, you know, very nice and full coverage. And I like that. Look at that. Very matte as well. Okay, so again, like, you know, was with me anyway, so when I always dip, like, you know, brushes into loose powders, I'm always very careful with it because even if it's a squirrel brush or if it's made from Silver Fox, if you're very heavy handed and how you press it into the product, you will always pick up a ton of product. But what I like about what I am doing right now is that it's actually like, you know, very smooth on the under eye areas and it's not disturbing the foundation that I applied earlier. Fantastic. Okay, so let me just remove the excess here on a microfiber towel and let me get a pressed powder form of like, you know, this setting powder. And as you guys can see, it doesn't pick up as much as the loose powder, which is actually acceptable for me. And let me just press that here. Oh. Oh. 
look at that. Look at this is there's a slight difference in terms of coverage. And I actually like the fact that you only pick up a very minute amount of product with this brush when you're using it with like you know pressed powder products. And it can really help you to build like you know the coverage that you need. And that's actually the type the kind of like you know makeup um, sentiment that I go for because I don't want you know loading the face with one product in one go because that's really a no-no. Light layers is always the key. Okay, so let me just set my nose area. Also here, I'm still using the pressed powder by the way because I don't want to fully mattify my face. That's not what I like. Okay, so I have a pesky blemish here. Let me just cover that. It's a very disrespectful blemish, I have to say. <laughs> okay, so I have my Laura Mercier um, Secret Camouflage here, and this is in SC4, and I have my Matsukondo brush, which I bought at the Brush Museum, and this is actually used for stamping colors into kimono. And I'm just going to stamp a little bit of the concealer onto this blemish so that we have, to a certain degree, very even, like, you know, face today. Okay, and let me go back to the Koyudo Yoshiki highlight and cheek blush, and let me just set that concealer a little bit. Okay, that's great, fantastic. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the brush heads first of these brushes, just so that I remove all of the creams and oils that the concealer has left on the brush. So I'm just going to spray them lightly and remove every excess here on a microfiber towel. And as you continue with the makeup, it's just going to dry out and air out and we'll be able to use it later for our eyeshadow application. Okay, so right now I'm just going to lightly um, set the rest of my face with some powder. And I am using the Givenchy Prism Libre in Popoline Mimosa, so in number 5. So it's a little bit deeper. And the reason why I'm using a deeper color of um, powder right now is because, again, I'm using artificial light. And artificial light sometimes can change the tone of your skin because there's just too much reflection coming on. So a much more deeper shade will actually work to counteract that. And by the way, I'm using my Chikahodo MKSK brush. I love this brush. For this and this is also made of gray squirrel hair okay so now let's add some color into the face so that we can just have a very nice dimension and i'm going to be using this ambient palette from hourglass and i actually would like to use this very nice like you know bright orangey color here and i'm just making sure that the area here with it we're in it actually like you know curves like it's like the pad of the finger is the area where i will pick up the color and the reason why I am using this product is because it's like, you know, baked gelée formula, so it's pressed, so it's more difficult to pick up. And I believe this brush will work for products like that because of the very, like, you know, resilient nature of the brush head. And I just love the way that it actually, like, you know, snaps back into position. So I believe this one, this brush will actually enable you to apply colors in a much more targeted fashion. And you're also able to blend it out when necessary. Mm, look at that. So again, I'm very light-handed with my application as always. And even in the way that I press it, like you know, the brush into the pan, because I'm always scared of picking up too much product. And then I want to intensify it a little bit more. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that here at the highest points of my cheeks. Beautiful blending. Love this brush for that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some highlight. And I actually want to use this powder here from the Butterfly Palette from Hourglass. And I'm going to flip the brush to the other side. I'm going to use the other tip here. Because I believe this, oh, it picked up quite a substantial amount of product. So let me remove that. 
and I'm going to add it here on the highest points in my cheeks and maybe blend it into my brow bone area. Okay, so I'm going to move here to this golden color so that we can just see because it's the color that I used earlier was not popping and there you go. Very nice placement, very nice ability of blending. Love that. So let me blend that now into the blush. So we have a very nice, like, you know, cohesive look and color on the face. Hmm, that's pretty. I loved how this brush worked with me today. Love it. Love it. Look at that. Nice blending all throughout. Perfect. Okay, since we use like, you know, big products here, also blush with a lot of shimmer. So um, to a certain degree, um, like, you know, we don't really have to blend that much because like, you know, the reflectivity of the products will actually work to your advantage. So now what I want to do is I want to use this brush again and I actually want to use it with like, you know, contouring products. So let me just buff out the colors away from the bristles of this in a microfiber towel. And I can't, there you go. I was looking for my um, contour palette from Busy Art. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up the lightest shade first of this contour palette. And I'm going to lightly brush it along my cheekbones here just so that we have that initial um, lay down of color. And that's going to add the first layer of shading that I need. Okay, I believe you can already see the very nice, like, you know, diffuse contour color coming out. And now I'm going to go back and use the middle color here. Two presses. And at the very back of my face, close to my ear, I'm just slightly dragging the product and blending it out with this brush. And I'm already seeing a very nice diffuse application of contouring. So let's intensify it a little bit. So I'm going to pick up more and continue to build it. Now that's what I love about this brush right now because it gives me the ability to layer and blend at the same time. And mind you, these are matte. Okay, so let me just scoop it a little bit into my cheekbones here in the apple area. Mm. That's actually nice. If you're someone who likes to contour, I think this brush is great for that, especially for the jawline area because it just has a way of hugging the jawline and helping you to really define it. Look at that. I'm sure, well, I'm sorry I have a beard, but if, like, you know, if you look at it closely, you can already see that the brush is already blending up the edges for me as I, like, you know, drag it along. Pack. Look at that in comparison here. Mm -hmm. Love that. So let me just pick up a teeny tiny bit of the darkest shade here at the very tip of the brush. And let me add that like, you know, as the final like, you know, contouring step of this cheekbone. Mm. Can you see that? Love that. Very nice and very well blended and also quite like you know, defined at the same time. Perfect. I love it. Now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a hint of um, finishing powder there and I'm going to be using this color and I'm just going to pick a little bit of it and you can be very generous with it on this cheek. So we have like a, a nice hint of warmth there and it's going to bring it all together. And I can't believe I was able to achieve this with one single brush. <laughs> Okay, very lovely. So far, so good. I am enjoying myself right now. Truly, truly. Okay, so I'm going to move a little bit closer because we're going to be playing with the eyes now. And I'm going to be using this Muse palette from Lisa Aldridge. It has a very nice, you know, warm tones of eyeshadows. And I am going to start by using... Okay, I believe these are dry now. So I'm going to lay one color on the eyelids first as a sort of like like in the first wash of eyeshadow and I would like to use this color here and I am using the Bobo and Chikahodo eyeshadow brush 
and I am just going to lay this all over. Now the main reason why I'm actually using this palette, by the way, from Lisa is because it has a combination of like, you know, glittery eyeshadows, also like, you know, matte eyeshadow colors. So we already have an array of different types of formulations that we can try out with these eyeshadow brushes from Bobo. Okay, so that's a very nice, like, you know, application of color, very even and also very easy to blend out. It's actually quite lovely. I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna get the Bobo X Chikohodo S01 brush. Yes, I got the name right. And I would like to add like, you know, a defining shadow here and I'm going to be using this deep shade here. And I'm just picking it up at the very tips of the bristles here. And I'm just going to apply that here all over my socket line. and blend it out oh wow that was actually very easy and i'm just building up the intensity a little bit and i can't believe on how soft the application was of this eyeshadow using this brush oh wow it's very it's very easy look at that look at the blend of that it's actually quite amazing. Wow. Okay, I wasn't expecting it to be that easy. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to use the Bobo N90S brush and I'm going to be picking up the same color. And I'm going to try and intensify the outer V portion right now. Ooh, nice blend and I'm going to add that into my socket line I love how it fits into my socket line by the way very easy and then there's already a much more intense definition going on now but it's still quite diffused okay I'm gonna remove the excess now here on a microfiber towel then I'm gonna start to sculpt my eye a little bit to blend out the edges more and just to create a lift for this eye. Fantastic! Okay, let me get more of this warm eyeshadow color and I'm going to add that into my lower lash line now. And then I'm just going to lift it. Oh, it's even able to create like a very nice soft definition. Okay, so let me just connect everything now into the eyeshadows on the upper eyelid and blend everything out easily. Okay, then let's just buff everything because blending is always the key. Fantastic. Hmm. Okay, let me get the. Um, liner brush and then I'm just using the same shade here and I just have to intensify the outer portion of my lower lash line here okay fantastic and then I'm just gonna use this brush again to blend everything wow <laughs> okay that was very fast I was not expecting it to be that fast and I actually love how resilient the tips of this brush head is because I can actually create some definition with this. Can you see that? I'm just like, you know, very lightly adding like, you know, a cut crease of short of sorts, pardon me, here into the outer portion of my eye here. And I actually love it. Look at that. Hmm. Okay, I approve you guys. I approve. Okay, and right now let me go to my palette here. And I'm going to pick up this very well-loved eyeshadow color from NARS. This is Bengali, I think. I really need to buy a new one of that. I've been saving that. 
And the main reason why I didn't like, you know, buy a new Bengali eyeshadow from NARS is because the palettes now are smaller. But the prices have remained the same. And I go like, what? That seems unfair. Okay, so I'm just using the liner brush now and I'm adding the brown color here on my upper lash line. And I think you guys can already see the intensity that it's creating. And I'm liking how it's actually very easy to apply the color using the tips of this brush. I think I need to buy another one of this. color. And guys, so far, I'm coming very close. I am not seeing any fallout from these eyeshadows. And that is actually amazing. Which means that these brushes are actually picking up the right amount of product. And it's actually helping you deliver the colors and the product nicely on the eyes without even having to worry about fallout. Okay, and right now let me just add a, maybe a tiny, tiny hint of a flick just to help with creating a lift. I love that. Look how nice and soft this eyeshadow look is going, you guys. Amazing. I love that. Hmm, it's very pretty. I like that. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is, whoops, I'm going to be using the Bobo and 90 M brush, and I will be applying some, like, you know, uh, glitter in the inner portion here of the eyelid. And where's that other palette? Okay, so this is the Myth palette from Lisa Aldridge, and I'm going to pick up this color here. And let's try to see if it will pick up, like, you know, glittery shades. Okay, it does pick up, but it won't pick up a ton of the product, which is actually great because sometimes with these, like, you know, glittery eyeshadows, it takes, like, you know, you have to be very careful with them because it can create a lot of fallout. Hmm. So this is, like, the topper shade of this, of this palette, this one. A very beautiful pinky, like you know, blue tone glitter. And again, so far, no fallout. Can you see your eyes? No fallout whatsoever. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, and I just want to add a bit of drama. So I'm going to go back to the Muse palette of Lisa. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm really enjoying myself right now. I am not kidding. And let me pick up maybe this nice shimmery shade here and let me add that in this portion of the outer eyelid and I'm just tapping the color here and building up the intensity a little bit and this is just going to add a very nice hint of transition into this part of the eye again I'm gonna go back and use the Bobo S brush and I'm gonna pick up this color again and I'm just going to add a hint more of intensity there. Very pretty. Very nice. I think this deserves a mascara. Hang on. Let me get a mascara. I'm just going to add a hint of mascara here just to complete the entire look. Look at that. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love how these brushes work with me right now. Okay, perfect. Okay, let me add like you know some finishing touches like more intensity on the lash line here. All right, and I believe that's my video today. So I hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with me as I get to know these brushes from Fudi Bobo. And I have to say I enjoyed them immensely. And, you know, these three brushes, these Bobo and Chikahodo collaboration brushes, are a revelation to me. I absolutely adore them. Like, where were these brushes all my life? I actually love them. Look at that. Look. Look how very nice and easy it was to actually create this. I really love that. And of course, these um, Bobo and 90 Kuriedo, um eyeshadow brushes, fantastic. They just really helped me to, like, you know, elevate the look a little bit and, like, you know, to add intensity without overdoing it. I love them. I love them. And of course, the Yoshiki um, brush from Koyudo, the cheek and highlight brush, 
worked very well with me today and mind you again I use this for contouring as well so how cool is that yeah so I'm actually looking forward in integrating these brushes into like you know my makeup routine and I'm so happy that they're now part of my makeup brush kit so um, I'm really looking forward in playing with them some more especially these three because if I use this for concealer earlier like especially these two I'm sure I can use this for like you know liquid um, eyeshadow products even for cream hmm. so I'm really looking forward to that so yeah so that's it for me today I hope that you guys enjoyed this so if you have any more questions about all the products that I used today and how I actually like you know use these brushes that I got from Foodie Bobo please let me know down in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it okay all right I'm gonna let you go now thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are bye